Hi everyone, Larry here. Welcome to Travel Guide and Photography. If you're new to the channel, thank you and welcome. If you're returning to the channel, thank you and welcome back. Also, if you're returning to the channel, you probably noticed something's a little different. I'm in a different location. Where am I? I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. Why would I be in Bangkok, Thailand? Well, if you're returning to the channel, you probably know for close to the last 12 years, I've lived and worked on different cruise ships around the world. Last year, in March of 2020, myself and my shipmate all got kicked off our ship due to COVID. For the past year, I've been renting a place from a friend of mine outside Yosemite National Park in the Sierra Nevada Mountains in California. Recently, the Thai government has opened up the borders with a handful of restrictions. One of those being a 14-day quarantine. I'm on day eight of my 14-day quarantine. So why am I putting myself through this? When my quarantine is finished, I have a house in Northeast Thailand in a place called Nawa. And I'm gonna go there, sit out the rest of COVID, and wait for my next ship, which is supposed to be the Norwegian Cruise Line Escape. Hopefully getting on sometime this summer, July, August, September, We'll see where it goes from there. In my previous videos, we've talked about a number of different things. One being itineraries. If you haven't seen that video, it's probably a good idea that you take a look. Itineraries is one of the most important things on any cruise, but especially when you're cruising to Alaska. Because one thing it's gonna do is let you know which glaciers you are going to. Because they all go to the same ports pretty much catch Camp Skagway and Juno. And that's what the following three videos were on. This is the fifth video. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the glaciers of the inside passage. We're gonna talk about glaciers that you see while you're on the ship. We're also gonna talk about glaciers that you see when you take certain shore excursions. One thing I wanna clear up, a few of you have contacted me and asked if the photographs in my videos are my own or are they stock? I've been a professional photojournalist since 1979. All the images used in my videos are my own photographs. So yes, they're my photographs, they're not stock images. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about Alaska. And let's talk about the glaciers that you will see on an inside passage journey. First, let's start out with the glaciers you'll see while you're on the ship. And you'll see a number of them. Usually the first glacier you see is the Sawyer Glacier. And to get there, you have to travel through the Tracy Arm Fjord. It's a beautiful journey, and from what I remember, it takes about two to three hours to get there. The Sawyer is a really nice glacier. It's not really big, but it's really nice. And I saw that in my first few contracts, 2010 through 2012. I've spent eight contracts in Alaska, so I've seen a number of different places. I haven't been back to the Sawyer until 2019, and I was absolutely shocked. Two thirds of that glacier has disappeared. Now this isn't a political show, and all my friends know that I'm a political junkie, but we're not gonna get into that. However, I'm going to say that global warming is real. And I don't care if you think if it's man-made, I don't care if you think it's a cyclical, it doesn't matter. The glaciers are melting, and they're melting at an alarming rate. In fact, when I was there in 2019, I told a lot of my friends and my patients, I would bet in another two to three years, ships won't be going to the Sawyer anymore. And when I was researching the itineraries for this video, I've noticed that's come true. Very few cruise lines are going to the Sawyer anymore. Most of them are now going through the Endicott Arm to the Dawes Glacier. I think I've been to the Dawes once, but I'm not really sure. So again, the Sawyer Glacier, it's really, really changed from 2010, 2011, 2012. And then over that seven year period, two thirds of that glacier has disappeared. Now let's travel a little bit farther north. Your next stop is gonna be Glacier Bay National Park. Glacier Bay has a couple of really great glaciers that I like. In fact, one of them is my number two glacier, the Marjorie Glacier. It's beautiful. It's about a mile wide. It's about 200, 250 feet high, somewhere thereabouts. 
and the captain will stop the ship very close to the glacier and he's going to spend about an hour there and he will spin the ship so if you were one of those people that like to sit in your cabin and just relax in sightsee no problem you're going to see the glacier however i think it's a good idea to go to the open deck and depending on what ship you're on it's usually deck 12 13 14 somewhere thereabouts and one thing and this is my hint that a lot of people don't think about and i always tell my patients make sure you go down to midships deck seven or eight it's seven on princess where they lower the lifeboats it's an outside deck and it has a totally different perspective you're 40 50 feet closer to the water itself so it's a total different perspective now another thing that i like about the marjorie it seems to cab a lot and if you don't know what cabbing is it's where a large chunk of ice breaks free and crashes into the water it's really quite spectacular and again the marjorie seems to have that happen a lot at least in my experience now another glacier that i really like is the lampu glacier it's not as big as far as in height as the marjorie but it's a really nice glacier but again due to global warming in a four-year period i noticed at least one third of that glacier has melted and disappeared so those are my two favorite glaciers in glacier bay national park and typically the ones that you see these last glaciers i've talked about the sawyer the lampu at glacier bay national park and the marjorie you'll see on a seven day round trip cruise out of seattle vancouver or victoria now we're going to travel a little bit farther north you only see these if you're on a seven day cruise either to or from whittier alaska typically on a northbound you will go to college fjord first college fjord has a handful of glaciers there's five tidewater glaciers there and they're beautiful but i don't think they're anything spectacular at least in my mind but they are well worth seeing next you're going to go up to yakutuk bay at the end of yakutuk bay is disenchantment bay and that's where you find the hubbard glacier the hubbard is my favorite glacier in alaska it's huge it's seven miles wide and about 400 feet above the water i remember i was there one time and i swear a chunk of ice at least three quarters of a mile wide fell off and calved into the water causing a four foot wave that rocked the ship now that's impressive i've seen it all types of weather hopefully when you go the weather will be nice the warmer it is outside the bigger chance you're going to see of calving but at any of the glaciers you're at especially the hubbard and the marjorie they seem to calve a great deal now if you're traveling southbound what you're going to do is end up going first to the hubbard glacier and again my favorite glacier hands down i love the hubbard you will bypass college fjord and you will go to the marjorie glacier and the lampu glacier so my advice is if you're on a one-week cruise and you decide to go the one-way route up to whittier and double check this because the itineraries change frequently usually the southbound is the way to go i personally would rather see the hubbard the margarine and the lampu than college fjord and the hubbard again the choice is yours these are just my recommendations now let's talk about the glaciers you see on select shore excursions and there's a number of these let's start with the one that's further south the sawyer glacier now i know we talked about the sawyer earlier but i didn't talk about this because i wanted to save it for this section of the video i don't know if all ships do it i don't know if all cruise lines do it but i know on princess at least one ship does it because i did it so check your itineraries and it's one that i would absolutely say when you first get to the ship go to the shore excursion desk and see if they do this because it's a limited load and it's going to fill up quick what happens is there's two different tours and if i remember right they're probably two and a half to three hours long maybe a little less i'm not sure it's been a long time since i've done it but they bring an excursion boat 
up alongside the ship that holds 100 people. You load up and you take off to the glacier. You're going to see a lot of wildlife, usually seals, although we did see some mountain goats. Also, there's some cascades along the way, a few waterfalls along the way, but it's really well worth doing and I can't press it any more urgently. If you have the chance to do this tour, absolutely do it. It's one of the best things I've ever done in Alaska. Now let's move up a little bit farther north. Let's talk about the different glaciers you can see on shore excursions in Juneau. Just north of Juneau, just a handful of miles, is the Mendenhall Glacier. Now some people take a tour with kayak and kayak on the lake right up to the face of the glacier. Still others take a tour and go to the ice caves. And others take a flight on a helicopter and actually land on the glacier and walk around for a while. Which I haven't done any of those, but I imagine they're really great. Another way to go is to hire a taxi or to take a tour, but if you take a taxi you're on your dime and your time. And take the taxi to the Mendenhall Lake Visitor Center. From there there's a one mile very easy trail that goes right to the shoreline of Mendenhall Lake. It's also right at the foot of Nugget Falls. Nugget Falls is 377 feet high. It's beautiful. It's more of a cascade than a waterfall, but again, it's still beautiful. And from that same place, right at the far edge of the lake, you'll see the Mendenhall Glacier. So it's a great place to hang out for a while, have a picnic, lunch, relax, take some photos before heading back to town. Another great tour to do is in Juneau itself. You go to the north edge of the pier and you'll find Wings Airway. They have the Taku Lodge Feast and Five Glaciers Seaplane Discovery Tour, which is a mouthful, but it's a great tour. When my grandson came on the ship with me for a couple weeks, we took this tour and we both loved it. You'll actually fly over to five separate glaciers on the way to the lodge. From there, you'll spend a good two hours, maybe a little bit more. You have enough time to go take a hike, walk around a little bit, relax, or just sit in a chair and enjoy the view. Because literally a stone's throw away is the Taku Glacier. Then they ring the dinner bell. And you have a great feast, which includes salmon grilled over an alderwood fire. Afterwards, you have enough time to hang around a little bit again and relax. Maybe go for a very short hike or maybe see a bear like we did. Soon after that, you jump on the plane and head back to Juneau. Let's travel a little bit farther north and let's go to Skagway. One of the things you can do in Skagway is take a helicopter to the top of one of the glaciers and go dog sledding. A lot of people really like this tour, but to be really honest, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great and neither did my friend that went with me. If you're going through some trails, through the trees and stuff like that, I think that would have been a lot more fun. Basically what you do is you go on a one mile loop on the top of the glacier. And that's pretty much it. You do get to see the dogs and you get to pet the puppies and stuff like that. But to me, um, honestly speaking, I didn't think it was worth the money. It's up to you. And like I said, a lot of people really enjoy it. Now I didn't do the one in Juneau, so I don't know if it's the same thing or not. Now one that I really did enjoy, and so did my grandson, is we took a ferry that actually passed Haines to the Davidson Glacier. What happens is, once you get off the ferry, you take about a 45 minute bus ride to a stream. Then you jump on a 31 foot canoe with your guide, and you paddle down the stream, across a small lake, to literally the face of the Davidson Glacier. And you hang out there for a half hour, 45 minutes, somewhere thereabouts. It's really, really a great tour. You have plenty of time to take a lot of photos. It's beautiful. And I think that, at least in my mind, was a lot more fun than doing the dog sleds. Again, all this stuff is totally up to you. Ask around, decide what you want to do. These are just my recommendations. One of my favorite tours in all of Alaska, hands down, is a trip with Mountain Flying Service going flight seeing over Glacier Bay National Park. The pilot, Paul Swanstrom, great bush pilot, tons of experience, will take you on an unbelievable, unforgettable adventure. 
He offers a one hour tour that goes over the east arm of Glacier Bay National Park, a 1.3 hour tour that goes over the west arm of Glacier Bay National Park. I've done both of those and they're great. You'll fly over mountain tops, snow covered mountain ranges. One time we flew over Glacier Bay National Park, there was actually a ship that was right next to the Marjorie Glacier, so that was kind of cool, because now I've seen it from yet another perspective. The one that I haven't done is the two hour Grand Flight, and that flies all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And that's my next bucket list thing in Skagway. So I can't wait to do that. But hands down, absolutely one of my favorite tours in all of Alaska is flight scene with mountain flying service. The goal of the channel is that you might benefit from my experience and my advice. And I hope these suggestions have helped you. I've also authored a book called Alaska and the Inside Passage, a guide to the port, tours, and shore excursions. It can be found at a few of the stores in Alaska, or you can contact me by email. I'll leave a link. If you've enjoyed travel guide and photography, please subscribe. It's free. Also, please hit the bell to be notified of my next post and please hit the like button. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below also. I promise I'll answer each and every one of them. If you're thinking about going somewhere that I haven't done a video on it, let me know that too. I've been to over 80 countries and if I've been there, I'll post a video for you. As crew, all of my posts and my opinions are my own. I do not represent any cruise line or the company I work for in any manner. So again, thank you for visiting Travel Guide and Photography, and let's explore the possibilities of traveling the world together.